What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Box Office Banter. I'm Brandon. That's I was about to call you Josh. Ty, dude, we don't even have fucking Rodney here, do we? Is he still asleep in his car? No one woke him up. <laughs> so, dude, Rodney is here this week, guys. I swear to God. We just he, forgot. <laughs> he literally passed out in the car, and I guess because of last week, oh I wasn't even fucking thinking about it. He wasn't here last week. Dude, can you go get him real quick? Really? I'm going to fuck you. You want to talk about unprepared mm. fuck, dude? Mm -mm. I completely <laughs> forgot he was out there. <laughs> what the fuck? I can't believe I just did that. That was about. I literally was like, "Hang on a second. Oh, I'm crying. <laughs> okay, let's All right, now this is about fuck. I guess we gotta fucking talk for a second. Hang on. Oh my god, this is great, dude. Ooh. This is great. Uh, yeah, this is a bad good thing. All right. Uh, let's let's just dive into it. They'll be they'll be out here be here a little bit. Did you He's get him? coming. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm let's uh. Fuck. Let's talk about the banter, buddy. Of the week, what in God's name? All right, the banner buddy of the week is going to go out to Chris Av, and he's got some constructive criticism with it. He says, "I love your show. However, I would like to make a comment about the audio. I have a hard time hearing some of you, and find myself constantly adjusting my volume to be able to hear all the commentary. Otherwise, keep up the good work and great content. And we love it when you guys mm -hmm. do stuff like that. Mm. We like the yeah, criticism, thanks. and we. I think what we found out essentially is Rodney once again just needs to not be so unprepared and just needs to talk into the there fucking mic. What do you? Where did you get? Are those my cheese puffs, man?" What's the can Why? opener Why for? <laughs> the can opener. Are you ready, dude? What's this week about? Did you wipe the crusties out your eyes? Play, man. Yeah, the crust. Yeah, that's true. Are you so awake now? Mm. Child, you don't have to give me one. Of that. <laughs> he starts growling at me. They're actually not <laughs> stale, too, which is even better. Why do you always have cheese and some? You don't have cheese slices, so it's the next best thing. Yeah, I mean, that's the evolution, dude. This started off so hectic. <laughs> yeah, but what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but thank you, Chris. Have have a cheese puff on oh, us. Nice. Anyways, uh, we're gonna kick this off with the child's play portion, which is the whole portion actually. So I'm this is throwing me off completely. Okay, now kick us good. off. Who want you know? Why don't you go first, Rodney? <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. You ready? Explain how that cheese puff was tasting. Yeah, the cheese puff was actually not bad. <laughs> right. Awful at first, but good. Kind of like the first Nightmare on Elm Street. So, the we're not doing child's play. <laughs> we're talking about that's next week. <laughs> so, I know you missed the week, still but waking now, up. you show up this week and pass out in your car, and I completely forgot about you. I waiting don't know what that says about all. me, but waiting. damn, first I just didn't here. want to say anything. I knew he was still out there. <laughs> I just wanted to see how far we'd go. Dude, I fucking completely forgot. I guess it was because of last week he wasn't here, dude. And I wasn't thinking about it. I was like, we, we got, got everybody? Yeah. Mm. Oh I'm my always God. here, whether it's in person or in and spirit. And we, we kind of jump into it without thinking. But you, you want to go, Rodney? Yeah. Um, Child's Play 1? Yes, Love that's it. usually where the we start. The first movie. <laughs> <laughs> I did not ask you to start in the middle. I know that's how you watch these movies. Yeah, it started way off. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, the, the first Child's Play... Awesome. Love that movie. Uh, <clears throat> the buildup in this movie for for Chucky himself is like, it's it's crazy because it's a slasher kind of film, but there's not, it takes a while for Chucky to get his first like physical kill. And the buildup to it is, it's really intense. And I'd forgotten how intense it is. So, uh, I mean, everything like story, like the story in it is, it's, actually a valid story like it's a good story you know him trying to get his soul back into the or out of the doll or to put his soul into the doll because he had been shot it's like this is a crazy random thing for him to try and do and then it works and then you know so on and so forth from the next movies now he's trying to get out of the doll but it's which is uh, great i like i like the first one a lot so yeah you gotta pay the <laughs> the troll <laughs> told to get in this boy's hole. <laughs> Is that yeah. what you're about to say? Yeah, I couldn't say it. Yeah. It's always sunny. Oh, yeah. It's always sunny. The boy's soul. Yeah, there you go. The boy's soul. Oh, oh yeah. I'm a mess. It was there. Oh, then we started <laughs> off wrong. <laughs> but we're going to finish strong. Okay. Uh, we do these in one take. People. Yeah, so there's no, there's no cuts. Yeah, we're we making do. it authentic, and that's what's great about. It. There might be some rusty spots, but you know you're getting it. There's straight tears from the heart. in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you, all right, dude, Josh, you got it. Bro. Oh shit! Um, Tear it up. Getting back in the cheese puffs. Dude. Oh. Three more, and I'm done. <laughs> um, something about the first child's play that I found um, interesting is somehow the movie seems believable. <laughs> yes. As far out there as it is, with a dude putting his soul through this voodoo shit through a doll, <laughs> like you somehow believe what's going on through the movie and you believe the um andy you know mm -hmm. developing this friendship with it like it's it was weird in that sense to me but as far out there as it is that it was somewhat believable even though there's like zero percent chance that this could actually happen yeah um but yeah. you believe in voodoo i mean yeah it might be voodoo do. but yeah i mean first one's great um I think Andy, as a kid, that kid actor does a good job. Oh, yeah, he um, does. Which is something a lot of these movies we're going through. They have little kid actors, and they they usually do a good job. Um, yeah, first one's really good. I don't good. have much more to say. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, just the, good, the, bro. The kid is so innocent and pure. Like You can't help but root for him. <laughs> yeah. Um and then when the kid starts crying when he's in the cell and he sees Chucky coming, he just breaks down. I was like, that kid can act. <laughs> As a kid, yeah, that's great. As a kid, yeah. <laughs> that but whole like, scene is so good with the shots like, of Chucky. Back in the 80s mm. and 90s, little kids like that could just walk around town and not oh worry about God. anything. Yeah, I was like, on the fucking bus. He, got on the, yeah. <laughs> he just gets off. <laughs> gunshot like happens. Ghetto. He's like, Chucky, follow the gunshot. <laughs> it's like, what? But then the fight scene at the end when the um, oh. the detective, he grabs Chucky because he's Chucky's obviously on top of <laughs> one of the people. He grabs Chucky and just throws him. I'm like, why don't you like pin him down and – why would you just grab the doll and throw him? He legs just comes back. And he, he gets <laughs> locked in the fireplace <laughs> and gets burned mm -hmm. up. I'm like, he's dead. He's not dead. Relentless. Chucky is reincarnated every every movie, <laughs> every movie basically. <laughs> and I love how... But dying yeah, such I, a bitch. Uh, yeah, I don't really have much. I like this movie, but y'all pretty much covered most of my notes. Oh, yeah, my and God. real quick, you mentioned that fireplace. That uh, the line Andy says, no, uh, I am. Oh, yeah, because Chucky always says, Friends to the end, or yeah, whatever. And, like, and he says, This is the end, friend. <laughs> <laughs> what a badass kid! Yeah. Like, what up? Drops it. <laughs> Might as well drop the fucking mic, dude. Yeah, uh, of course, great opening to set the table. Just Charles Lee Ray, you really get a feel for the character in that short stint he's on the screen. Compliments to Brad Dorff on that. Mm -hmm. Him going up in there, and you also get a feel for Chris Sarandon's character and him going up in there that he's really been after him and he wants him and he'll do anything to get him. And Brad Dorff, you're like, I got to find something. I got to do something. That whole scene is very, very well executed. I love that. And Brad Dorff as Chucky, once he gets inside the doll, is just perfection. This is one of those things I can't imagine you getting anybody to fill the void of him. It is so nice that he is in like all of these damn flicks, and he does a hell of a good job in the original, as expected from what you grow to know and to expect from him. Uh, Chris Sarandon as the detective, he's great. Underrated as a horror actor, too, I think, in general. I actually really like him in, uh, what's the second Tales from the Crypt movie? Bordello of Blood. A lot of people don't like that movie. I thought he was good in that. And, of course, Fright Night. He's great as the main vampire in that. A little bit of Disturbia in Summer of 84, which we've brought up on the show in that movie. If you haven't seen that classic, I would hope you have. Uh, Alex Vincent, you know, he's, a, he's adorable as Andy, and his mother is really believable and the way she fights for him, man. Like, I really buy that she would do anything for him. Like, she would throw herself in front of a train for Andy. Now, she might let him go travel on buses around with hobos, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. But, we yeah. Didn't, we didn't even mention uh, when Chucky goes and sees his friend John, and he's a... He starts messing with the, the voodoo. voodoo. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I was yeah. going to get to that. Oh, that's a great scene. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're good, dude. Okay, you're good. All, you're all good. Uh, at least I, I think I did. I don't see why I wouldn't have put that. And uh, there's a certain eeriness that is lost in the later films. Like when Andy is saying, Chucky wants to watch the news and stuff like that, and then the TV's flipping on, and you're just kind of wondering, like, is this Andy doing this? Is this Chucky? There's a bit of like intrigue when you you've seen it now so you know it's chucky when you first watch this 
you're honestly wondering if it might be Andy. And it's kind of creepy, dude. There is some creepiness to the original. That uncertainty of what's no, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And the build is great. Uh, great first kill. No Chucky, because we're still wondering, like, hey, like, is this Chucky? Is this Andy? But just the hammer and then the falling out. That was one, I remember that was, Ch Child's Play is one of the first horror movies I ever saw, if not my first. I can't really nail down what my first one was. But I remember the hammer hitting the chicken eye and her free falling. I was like, oh, my God, this is insane. And I still get that feeling. That free fall looks brutal. Uh, I love how Andy Andy's mom drops the batteries out of the box. That whole yeah. scene is so fucking epic. Just her finally, because she loves her boy. Like I said, she jumped in front of the train for him. And I believe that she's sitting there just like, you know, maybe there's something to this. No, 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 couldn't be. And you can feel her uncertainty, but she's done thinking her kid is that crazy. And when she picks up that box and the batteries fall out, and she kind of looks over immediately, I can imagine that feeling. And you as the audience are just like, oh, shit. Like, that is an oh, shit moment. And then when she picks him up to do that, mm. and the creative choice to have him turn his head all the way around, he's like, hi, I'm Chucky. Like, and she drops him. And I love the little barrel roll he, he does, does under the couch, dude. It's like, in that moment, I can only imagine, you're like, holy shit, this is real. And by that time, she's like, you talk, you. And the reveal, and you first see the animatronics on his face that are done so well. He's like, you stupid bitch, I'll teach you to not, you little slut, I'll teach you not to fuck with me. Or whatever he says, because he has to at that point, he can't go in the fucking fire. That is just fucking magnificent. And that goes to the Chucky's one-liners. And like I said, the animatronics, all that's perfect. They really bring this doll to life. Something you can't do with CGI. It would ruin it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Chris Sarandon in the car with Chucky. I thought that scene was amazing. He's over here, like, stabbing the knife up, and he's trying not to wreck. He's pressing the gas pedal. That shit was intense as hell. And I love the plot of Chucky having to stay in the doll unless he can pass it to Andy. I mean, that is a very intense thing. And watching him go through hell to try to just get Andy alone while not blowing his cover... Uh, a lot of random creepy shots, like especially at the hospital where Andy looks out the window and Chucky's little feet are going and disappears behind the wall. He sees him coming up the steps. He sees him in the window. They do so good with a lot of that shit. Uh, another one-liner that I love when he talks about the girls like, ooh, what an ugly doll. And he's just like, fuck you. <laughs> like, that's fucking great. And who doesn't love the chant that Ade Due Dimbala? Give me another whoa, stimulus whoa, whoa, stop, check, stop, I stop beg of you. <laughs> that stupid ass meme. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go in there with it. But if that, that's how I got to <laughs> get a stimulus check, bro. He, he's seen it, dude. I can do a mean chant. And Chucky's absolutely relentless at the end, kind of like what you were touching on. I love that about Chucky in this movie. You think he's done. He's still going. You think he's done. He's still going. And pretty solid ending theme. I never understood why they ditched the ending theme on this movie. All around, it's pretty great. And to touch on the voodoo shit a little bit, because I actually didn't write it down, just him talking to that dude. And that dude, why does he even have a fucking voodoo doll of himself? Yeah, you ever think, think about that. Like, maybe that's something he's got to do. But that whole scene is great. Just breaking bones. Like, you shouldn't tell people where you hide this. All of that. Child's Play 1. Absolute classic. <clears throat> the ending when Andy's uh, walking out of the room and he looks back at Chucky and he like kind of gives a sense like it's not over. Oh, you know dude. I mean? It's so good. It's great. Child's Play 2, anybody? He's always just I mean, staring into Bruce Lee's soul. <laughs> I'm enamored. Uh, I mean, I like Child's Play 2. I think it has... Um, a lot of the same feels as the first one. Mm. It almost feels like an extension yeah. of the first movie, which I did like, because that vibe from the first movie, I think, is the best yeah. vibe out of any of them by far. Um, second one starts off with them rebuilding Chucky, essentially, at the toy factory. Yes, I love those um, opening credits. Uh, the opening scene's good. Um, the dude gets, what, like, shocked or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then you see Andy is in like foster care he's getting adopted by these foster parents and like you can't help but just feel terrible for the kid because like he's telling the truth but yeah. nobody's ever gonna believe him unless no. they see the doll it, themselves it's a, it's a repetitive thing that goes throughout the circle. whole series like even in later movies mm -hmm. you're like oh this is how and there's not one person's like you know i believe you my kid once had a doll like there's none of that it's fucking i ain't buying your shit and can you blame him you can't yeah and i mean 
Second one's just as entertaining as the first one with the kills and just watching Chucky wreak havoc on people. Uh, what was the the foster dad's name? Um, Phil. Phil. It's Phil because the house is hanging. Phil. Yeah, when he <laughs> tripped him down the steps. That's the best, dude. <laughs> That just watching Phil's face. How's it hanging? Yeah, Phil? that <laughs> that was a great kill, a great scene there. Um, Chucky's got the best one-liners, dude. I swear. Yeah, and then um, Andy's foster sister or whatever, uh, Kyle. Kyle. So hot. I love. Yeah, Kyle I love sister. Kyle in the movie. She's a great character. They do a good job with her and watching um, her character development and her relationship with Andy grow throughout the movie. And then at the end, she's the one trying to save him. And then once they get to that toy factory at the end. <laughs> No. Movie goes to like another level for all me. And that that whole scene is amazing. That whole like third act there at that <laughs> at the uh, toy factory is fantastic. Yeah, you can't beat that, <clears throat> dude. You really can't. It's it, it'd be tough if you tried. <laughs> uh, Which one y'all want it? Boy. Yeah, Andy gets I guess adopted and immediately goes to his new room and they forgot there was a Chucky doll <laughs> in, the in the closet. And you're like, all right, they're going to get rid of it. And then later on in the movie, they still keep the uh, Chucky at, doll. At that point, it was Tommy. But yeah. <laughs> Tommy, yeah, whatever. Yeah, the Tommy doll. Um, let's see here. I, again, I really like Kyle. Uh, the the maze, whenever they're in the... Uh, yes. The factory. The maze the factory. of Chucky dolls. Yeah, it reminded me of The Shining, but it's, with Chucky boxes. It's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh the uh they stop the machine the employee goes in there and starts working on it right Ooh, under where oh the yeah. eyes come down oh that's yeah. a osha violation he shouldn't be doing that <laughs> it's very true them osha bitches <clears throat> i still never seen an osha member but i've been warned about him my whole life and then uh <laughs> yeah chucky gets his hand cut off and then mm-hmm. sticks a knife in yeah, it evil like, dead oh, style dude. yeah uh and then the ending where they uh blow chucky's they melt him down with that oh I don't even know what it is. Hot goo. Yeah. Or what? It's like wax. Like Andy that. about it's got got wax. with that shit too, dude. And Kyle to oh, pull yeah. him out of the way. It was Thank like, God well, what? Shoot him in the like, like, like Another OSHA violation. That would have been cool if they brought yeah. Kyle back in like some of the later movies. That would have been uh, a cool she thing. Was in the, she was at Did the you end. Did not watch the end of the... She was at the end we'll of Cold. We'll get to that. After, yeah, yeah, after, after the credits. credits. Yeah, we might as well. Well, well. I didn't watch after the credits on that. I was super fast to get it out of there. Like, all right, this is done. Uh, then they then they blow Chucky's head up with the the air hose. Like, Just take like, it out of your is mouth. It. Yeah, it's like Rodney with them fucking cheese puffs coming. Uh, out. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy Child's Play too, as well. As well, <laughs> and Chuck. Yeah. What up, Rodney? What's going on, Brandon? You up though? <laughs> oh, so. <clears throat> What you do with that can opener? We never did get a solid answer for that. I started laughing when we were talking about it first. Can opener, dude. Who doesn't need a can opener? Just in case. People that don't have cans. Typically, I don't see one. Yeah, that's can opener opens everything. Okay, okay. So Uh, back to Child's Play Two. Yes, I liked it. (laughs) Awesome. Always random. How did you feel? (laughs) Great take. No, I've always liked. I've always liked the first three Chucky movies, but. I mean, two, two is awesome, and then also you got a something he almost kind of dove on was uh, the fact that Andy still was giving Tommy like a second chance almost, mm-hmm. like walking around with him, holding him, going, sitting him on the little bench or whatever while they're swinging over the mm-hmm. dead doll body, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that was you know, great. Chucky was just Chuck staring was just at him. there like, do not kick but, that up. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, like that, I, I kind of like how they added that in to where it's like, okay, well, He's willing to give it a second chance, check the batteries in and make sure it's not really, you know, you know, Chucky and make yeah. sure it's Tommy. But uh yeah, that scene with Phil where it's you know, great. how's it hanging, Phil? Dude, that how's shit. How's it hanging, Phil? Dude, his <laughs> demeanor, Chucky's demeanor in that scene it's perfection. was perfection. Yeah, it was great. It was great. <laughs> his one liners is kicking it up. But I didn't at first like cuz it's been a year since I've seen the original 3, but at first I didn't like uh Oh, girl, what was her name? Kyle? Kyle? Yeah, I didn't she's, like her at first. Yeah, but she, but she grows. grows on you, like, tough. She's and one then, of my ten favorite female characters in horror movies. Yeah, I love her And she in that movie. believes Andy, and when she believes Andy, you feel like she, like, legitimately believes, like, okay, so oh, this yeah. doll is, like, what he says it is, you mm-hmm. know? And uh, getting I mean, him through the windshield and everything. Uh, when it's she like a the build because she she naturally has trust trust issues because right. it sets the table for that goes without saying she's 
you know, she's been shipped out. She's not even unpacking her bags. Like, what's the point? So she's obviously going to kind of be a douche, but you can see under that a little bit that there is something more to her. She does care. And then by the end where she's just full-fledged caring for Andy like a brother and they're inseparable, I, I just love the fucking turnaround on that. And her as a character, she's a badass too. She's not bad to look at. and Maybe not in the first all. scene. She looked kind of weird in the first scene with the – the fuck she almost looked like a biker or something <laughs> i don't know but yeah but yeah. that i like that kill with the the guy with the briefcase at the beginning no oh, yeah that was such a good way to start the movie off because yes. he was annoying anyway i didn't like that guy oh yeah forgot the vodka nah <laughs> that bastard <laughs> that's why you bring the beer dude so yeah child's play two overall i hated it um <laughs> i think started I think off with i liked solid. it and then no. you talked about it and you're like that's right i don't <laughs> like it at all no it's pretty good i, I like child's play too so yeah like, like we talked about the opening credits i think are great this great creative choice there not having the mom seems like a problem initially i'm like oh no you're not gonna have the mom in this and the foster family but cal swoops in and saves the fucking day on that front and i think it's even a little better as hard as it is to say because i love the first two girls in these movies uh andy i think is better overall in this movie i don't i mean i don't know if he's better overall as an actor but he just naturally becomes that because he's a little bit older and can do a little bit more probably has a little more range uh First was Chucky Unleashed after the midway point. This one is Chucky Unleashed the whole time. Now, there's a part of me that's like, I like the buildup of the first one, and that gets points, but there's also a part of me that's like, this is the first time we saw Chucky Unleashed, and to see him like that the whole movie was so rewarding, too. Uh, One-liners are even more on point. I mean, even Andy kills it. Like, want to hear me say your, your name backwards? Backward, thank you. <laughs> <Kyle>. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, dude, he's got he's got it like that. That was fucking great, dude. I still laugh at that corny ass dad joke yeah. from a kid. Uh I love where he destroys the Tommy doll. That's one of my favorite scenes in this franchise where he's like laughing with that I can I can do some impressions now, but I can't do that. <laughs> that he's just slamming. He's like, Tommy, eat dirt, Tommy, and he's just like laughing hysterically while he's burying him. That is amazing to me with a little kid shovel. God, I fucking love that, dude. And then I love how also to play off of the Tommy thing, they're now now that Chucky's inserted in the house, they go up to him and they're like, he's like, hi, I'm... And he looks to the left while he's got to think real quick and then like match his eyes again. He's like, Tommy, mm-hmm. want to play? Like, you saw him stumble. Like, I was about to say, Chucky, shit. And I love the thought of like, we don't hear how Brad Dorf reacted to that, but you could visually see like he was like, oh, I about fucked up right there, didn't I? I love that. That's one of my favorite scenes as well. I love, uh, you know, like, you know how Chucky was shitting bricks when they were digging up Tommy, too, dude. Like, you know, they were like, oh, my God, like, do not fucking do this. Like, I'm about to have my cover blown already. And I genuinely laugh at, like, the obstacles that get tossed in Chucky's way repeatedly, dude. And, you know, I'll touch a little more on that, like, at the toy, the toy factory later. Uh... We have a Bill sighting in this movie, too. Bill from Workaholics. We were actually planning. We had talked about having him on the show at some point, so hopefully that still happens. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was kind of cool to see him in this. He's the dude with the longer hair that talks to Kyle like, cool party last night, all that shit. Uh, the, of course, the how's it hanging feel, like you said. And there's so many more lines. One of my favorite lines, too, is when Kyle and Chucky get pulled over. Not even the, like, you got him, women drivers, all that. That's great. But when the cop is talking to him, Chucky's got, like, blood coming out of his nose. And he doesn't even return to, like, his form normal. He just is, like, a snarl almost, kind of just, like. And the cop's like, oh, what's your name, guy? And he's like, Chucky. Because <laughs> he's just pissed at this point. I love that. I always, uh, I always laugh. At that scene, 100%. And then the Toy Factory, dude, it's just legendary what we talked about. And I love how he's too late and he's like, I'm trapped in here. And then Kyle dumps the shit over him. He's like, what the hell? And all the boxes come down on him. That gets me every time. And, of course, Dorif, the animatronics, they're all still so fucking great. Dude. Brandon, stay calm. There's a spider. Where? On your bookcase. On your bookcase right there. I've been watching it for like two minutes. Rodney, I need you to kill it. That's letting it just get loose. It might go up on our feet now. <laughs> I like how you're like, stay calm. Like, yeah, I don't like spiders, so there's that. 
Uh, why don't you kick off Child's Play 3? What about the teacher scene? The teacher scene, Mrs. Catabelle. He just Nobody beats even talked about the teacher. No, that's yeah. great. At every hit, it like zooms that out was, a little that bit. That was, to me, the most intense part of the whole movie was that her looking for Andy in the closet, in the closet. but really, he's nowhere to be found. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like, when is he going to jump out and kill her? Mm. And then, yeah, so, yeah. There's some scenes, I'll, sometimes I like leave shit off my shit because I'm like, somebody's bound to talk about that. But then I end up forgetting I about it. Thing. <laughs> I, had, I had it written I'm like, down. I'll leave, some, I'll leave something for Tyler to say, Rodney yeah. to say. Oh, is Tyler not gone yet? No, he no, didn't. No. Yeah, You're up. Do I'm Child's up. Play 3, dude. No, no, that's no, true. I didn't do You're Child's baby. Play 3 yet. No, no, I'm telling him to start the new one. Oh, okay. I mean, he, we're making sure you went on the last one. Oh, of course, okay. Rodney didn't pay attention. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Rodney. Welcome to Box Office Banter. Uh, we're going to be talking about Child's Play 3 right now. Um, this is my favorite one of the Child's Play movies. No spoilers. Um, <laughs> it's but great. It's my favorite. There's going to be spoilers. Yeah. yeah. But no, it's <laughs> this this movie, Child's Play 3, even seeing it today as opposed to like, what, eight years ago, whatever, since the last time mm. I've watched it, it still holds up to me as, as the the favorite one just because <clears throat> the mm. military school like mm-hmm. who it's a great that? moment like that's genius it's you know, so personal. underrated this whole movie's under fucking i'll rated. get to it when i when it's my turn but that's a reason it took a step back for me oh i'm the ahead. complete oh, yeah, opposite go yeah. ahead well what got me to love that it back in the day though was the whole paintball scene yeah. where he switched out the paint for Genius. the real bullets. Real bullets? Yeah. And dude, yes. I remember watching it and when I was younger and I was like, oh my God, he's doing it. And then watching it last night, I was just like, dude, this is incredible. Like, mm-hmm. he's so smart to do that. And then they're all shooting, you know, and then they shoot, you know. Shel- he's an he's asshole, terrible. but he was... He was a he was an okay guy. No, uh, I was no, glad. He, when blow he his him. face off. <laughs> I'm just I didn't on think that. He level. was the worst guy around, but I he mean, was he, pretty shitty. Yeah, I didn't like him at all. Dude, the, <laughs> the the only thing that I do not like about the third one is the 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 new boy in it. Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, I mean he's. I don't like Tyler either. He's <laughs> him he's, or him. He's got like Both an awkwardness <laughs> to him, funny. but then at the same time he's like so. It, his acting bothered me, like mm-hmm. too, like agree. you know, bad, but not enough to make it to where the movie's not like any good for me because you know I'm focused on everybody else in it. But yeah, three is the shit. It really you know? is. It's so good. It's underrated. It's really underrated. And it's like Andy can't get a break, dude. Like, and he's sitting there yet Neither again trying Chucky. to tell people, like, look, <laughs> he's up on that hill, like, <laughs> I finally got it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just let yeah. me get out of this body. <laughs> it's but so yeah, great. It's, it's a great. The, the first one or the third one is great. So. Agreed. Yeah, I'll, I'll like. go. Uh, little Tyler steals the doll and doesn't deliver it to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Chucky finds out he doesn't need Andy. He can, you know, go into Tyler's soul. He's like, wait a minute. Uh, the scene where Chucky crushes the garbage man. Yes. Mm-hmm. I love that, that scene. Was, that was one of the best kills yeah. up to this I'm point. Trapped in here. Uh, and then Chucky kills the barber when the barber's giving him a haircut. That weird motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he was the creepiest part about that whole movie, though, was uh, <laughs> the, the, the barber Presto, you dead. Of Joe Biden, <laughs> didn't he, with the hair? <laughs> the, and then at towards the end, the festival scene, I loved it. And the haunted house scene, loved it. Another great set piece for Chucky to recap. Yeah, again. I enjoyed this movie. Uh, Tons of fun. What, see what Josh and Brandon have to say. Okay. So... The more distance I get between when I watch the movie and now, the more I like the movie. Mm -hmm. When I was watching it originally, me being in the military, there was a lot of military mistakes in the movie that just irked me to a point where I was like, that would never happen. Like, no. Like, uh, example, and it's something none of you all would have realized, but um, all their name badges on their shirts were on the right side. They go on your left side, always. Every branch, it's on your left side. So that's something I initially caught right off the bat, and I was like, why are they on the wrong side? The the dude giving haircuts, those are not military haircuts. Like, <laughs> no, the, that hair is old. way too long. When we were in BMT and they cut our hair, they would just grab your ear, and they'd cut your hair in 35 seconds. Like, they were not nice about it at all. Your head's all red. Like, they just didn't give a shit. 
Um, I think the biggest thing that bugged me was the lieutenant colonel, and not because of the character in the movie, but because of the believability of it for me. And what I mean by that is the average age for a lieutenant colonel in real life is 45 years old. That's what I, I always like think, seven. too. He's like 20. No, no, the lieutenant colonl. Oh, you're talking about okay. Shelton. No, yeah, the, the he guy, looked like yeah. he was in his 20s. Yeah, like he the, just, he did like one year, the, and then he's like, I'm promoted. I'm the good. youngest lieutenant colonel in the history of lieutenant colonels is 36 years old. Well, he's he's got like Benjamin Button, bro. I read up. You so would that, think you would think they would do the research. You know what I mean? That was they, something that just every time you right, fuck up, this movie, man. <laughs> every time he popped up on the screen and they said Lieutenant Colonel, it just kind of irked me a yeah, little bit. Because there's pissed. no way he got promoted that high and went through all the ranks <laughs> that quick. Like he Josh was 28. <laughs> he was 28 at that's the oldest he was. There's yeah. no way he was Lieutenant Colonel. The actual Colonel, he was the right age. The dude yeah. that. Uh, had the heart attack yeah, and that was scared fucking him. great dude he was the right <laughs> age but that lieutenant colonel and even his sidekick the major yeah. he was too young to be a major too so just little things like that really irked me as i was watching the movie but like i said the farther i get from when i finished watching it the more enjoyable it is because yeah. I, I stopped forgetting about those little inconsistencies as brandon had said in the mm. movie and the mo the movie does become really enjoyable um I did really like what you said, Rodney, with the whole gun scene mm -hmm. and how Chucky put the bullets in and it was a good 25, 30 minutes before anybody got shot. Like yeah. it wasn't put in and then they got shot immediately. Like they drug that out a bit and you're like, when's it going to happen? Yeah. Who's going to get shot? When's it coming? And then Shelton standing there and they fucking put one right through his heart. I was like, hell yeah. yeah. You were probably like, get that fucking under A. You're like, got an AK He's with an rounds imposter, hanging off dude. of it like Rambo. That's not a bit <laughs> Just losing your uh, shit Gary, drunk. that be, though, playing paintball and someone shooting off live rounds? You're literally, like, oh, screaming God. it, trying to make your Stop. voice elevate over the gunfire. Like, it's live rounds. That would be so intense. Um, and then something else I caught, you mentioned the barber when he was killed. That Presto. was a little bit of foreshadowing, because if you remember oh, the yeah. first scene, he puts the knife to Andy's neck and said that's why someone cut their hair yeah, so, so they, they couldn't slit their throat. They grabbed the back of your hair. And then he, his throat gets slit later on in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I liked when Harold jumped on that grenade. He's kind of been the pansy the whole time, and he's yeah. the one that took the grenade for everybody. Yeah, I like that, too. Uh, it reminded me of uh, Captain America. Oh, you're going to say some on. sad shit. Like, I had a buddy. It reminded me of him. <laughs> no. He did the same thing. He saved In me train. and my whole infantry. And my 800 years old colonel, um, we were all safe. And then the uh, <laughs> the gun training for Andy finally comes full circle. Yes, uh, I love that. Toward, love at that the end too. of the movie, when he has when he's got to shoot Chucky because he was working with the girl uh, De Silva. Uh, oh. She was hot too. Mm -hmm. I liked her character. I think she was like 16, right? No, that's all right. <laughs> she might have been. But yeah, no, it's. No. The farther I get from watching it, the better the movie becomes. Like, my score, I think I should raise it a little bit. Why don't you go on and raise it real quick? Oh, it's all right. <laughs> Perfect yeah, it Get a raisin. All righty then. Another great opening. I will say this, though. Uh, kind of disappointing not having Alex, Alex Vincent back, but this dude didn't do a great job as Andy, and I get why they did it. They needed to advance the story along a little more. That way it feels a little bit more fresh and new because now we're just keep retreading the same water over and over again. And the new dude did pretty good as Andy. He wasn't great. I don't think he was even as good as Alex Vincent, but he was, he was serviceable. Um, I think the military camp, although there is some inconsistencies, creates a fun place for Chucky to wreak havoc. It's just fun to me. I think it's perfect just watching Chucky. Like, my guy, I, there's not many places I would have liked to have thrown Chucky into. Um, as we talked about, I uh, had the the weird-ass military barber. I like how Chucky gets back at him, though, with the presto. You did. That shit. Um, I'm not a big fan of the new kid Chucky tries to transfer his soul into. And you talked about that, too. It just... He's just not as good of a child actor, and he comes he comes off not just weird where you're likable weird. You're just like, there's just something off about this kid, not in a good way. Um, 
like you talked about, the trash man getting squashed. That used to freak me the fuck out when I was younger. That and the trash compactor and Star Wars A New Hope. Both those scenes, I remember I'd always have those on repeat. I'm like, good God, can you imagine just getting smashed like that? I'm still scared of garbage men to this day. Oh, dude, yeah. I won't go near my trash cans. Yeah, dude. Ever since your cousin pulled that prank on you, I'm just making sure. (laughs) Okay. And again, it almost goes without saying at this point, Dorif as Chucky is amazing. And I could make a debate if Dorif ain't the best he's ever been as Chucky in this movie, between two and this one. Now, he's just as good in the first one, but you get the half and half. You can see him go crazy through two and three. Dorif murders it. No pun intended. Um... And then what you were kind of saying, dude, I was going to go back to that. Uh, D- Dorif, dude, when he scares the shit out of the guy and tend to a heart attack. That's mm-hmm. one of my favorite scenes. That's he falls on that glass table. Yeah, that, that, that was, that was yeah. fucking, that was hilarious. The, you got to be kidding me. And then I also had the Chucky switching bullets. We won't jump too much in that. Then the grenade jump with the guy. We won't go too much on that. Uh, and then for the second straight movie... We have a real interesting place for Chucky to fuck people up in at the carnival, mm-hmm. like yes. you were saying. That whole fucking dude, him getting the side of his face chopped With off like side. that right there. It's just amazing. And <clears throat> Chucky, again, just can't get anything done, no matter how <laughs> hard he tries. And then, uh, you know, Chucky, again, like I'm saying, he's, he's goes, he keeps going through the fucking ringer, dude. <laughs> He just keeps, there's nothing, he can't get anything fucking right. And, you know, it's intense not knowing if Andy can make the shot for Tyler, like Josh was saying. It really is. That one leaves you on edge a little bit. And honestly, the only thing that holds this one back a little bit for me is the supporting characters. I think they're just not as good. I feel like there's at least one person to latch on to in the first one. I'm like, oh, my God, the mom is so great in this. Even Chris Sarandon in the second one, I'm all in on Kyle, dude. And this one, even Andy's a step down. I'm just not as into everybody outside of Chucky. The Silva, you didn't like her? No, she was just she yeah. was just there to me. Even the guy with the glasses, I felt bad for him because he was a nerd, but I was never actually tied to him. Like I could, like all these characters, I, there was nobody necessarily bad, just nobody elevated. See, De, De Silva with me started out really strong, but then it didn't go anywhere. Yeah, it just it yeah, like climb, where she's in the line. Yeah, where she's yeah. in the line, you're kind of feeling it. But in general, dude, just there wasn't that ex- that even any person to cling on to really, other than Chucky. I mean, maybe a little, but not to where I loved any character. It was literally just Chucky's fucking amazing, but there's no human characters that really go over the top for me, and that's what separates this one from one and two, in my opinion. <coughs> Proud of Chucky. I'll, I'll start oh. this one. You see at the beginning, Tiffany rebuilds Chucky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Always getting rebuilt. And then you find out Tiffany and Chucky were, you know, past lovers when they were both alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Tiffany locks him up, and then Chucky, they get in a fight, obviously, because they're a, they're not a good... Psychopaths. Well, they're, yeah, they're both psychopaths. <laughs> they're perfect for each yeah. other in their own weird way. I was going to say they're way. not, <laughs> but they are. See, uh, Chucky escapes and, and kills Tiffany and turns her into a doll. Mm-hmm. Perfect, of course. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, whenever they're on their like honeymoon, because what, what was their name? Jade and Jesse. Yep. Run off, which Catherine Heigl. Mm. Catherine, yeah. I, they they get married and they both are like they regret it because they each think each one of them murdered her uncle. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> was a good look. When they back blow up the 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 nail bomb and it goes in their her uh, uncle John yeah. Ritter. Yep. Yeah, they think great. They marry each other not knowing, thinking each other is a murderer, which don't get married. <laughs> but then they're on their little honeymoon, and uh, Tiffany goes in that one room with those two people that are thieves and throws the wine bottle up and and hits the glass and it comes mm. down, and which which happens a couple times in this franchise. Yeah, that was a great kill. The and then time. right yeah. after that, uh, Chucky proposes to Tiffany, and then you get a a great sex scene between Chucky oh and Tiffany. Oh, my God, dude. I felt like I was oh, on Viagra. Yeah. I don't know and then, about you guys. And then they <laughs> call their uh, their friend to come uh, come and help them out because they don't know, you know. And the friend comes and he finds uh, 
the her uncle in the uh, in the van. And then he grabs a gun and he's like, no, no, no. Like, I'm getting out of here. You are both fucking crazy. <laughs> and then he gets hit by a semi. <laughs> and that was a brutal just explosion. body explosion. Imagine that fucking semi driver like, what the hell? <laughs> Another one. Like he's done <laughs> yeah. multiple times. Yeah. Uh, then they, then Chucky holds him hostage and I don't know. Uh, the ending is just out of nowhere apparently dolls can have sex and get, give birth within like two days see but you're watching a movie that's about dolls that are possessed so you should have suspended belief a long time ago this ain't a true story no it's what? not <laughs> i know texas chainsaw oh that's not true either <laughs> but yeah. yeah that that's the way i look this at is it, okay this okay was okay just okay um okay. so yeah it starts out in that evidence room and we see some familiar masks yeah in that evidence room you see jason you see michael's mask i thought that Dude, was there's nice, some great callbacks that in was this some movie. nice little touches um, this is how you do callbacks take notes halloween 2018 um let's see i do like john ritter as the chief warrant of the yeah. police officers um, r.i.p yeah that was a good casting um i did like there was some uh Creative kills, like Tyler said, with the nails on the uh, airbags, and then they blow that up into his face. I thought that was unique. I like the uh, Damien, the uh, that weird dude that Tiffany was. Uh, oh, dude, that dude's strange as yeah, fuck. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Chucky, or she has him in handcuffs on the bed, and then Chucky comes alive, rips his fucking piercing out of his lip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then he's fucking dead. And then later on, she goes to bed right next to him with the fucking dead dude. Yeah, in over on her yeah. side. Um, what else did I have? Um, so a mistake that irked me in this movie. 49 minute mark. Um, it's after the cop car blew up and they're driving away. Um, the passenger window is clearly down, but... Uh, the girl's hair is not blowing in the wind at all. And that <laughs> irked me for that whole, like, two-minute scene. <laughs> you just want to be able to just, yeah, like, or roll the fucking window up. Um, then you find out that um, the chief, Chief Warren, took those nails to the face, but he wasn't dead. And he comes, sits back up later in the movie, and Chucky <laughs> ends up stabbing him, which going, I think, before that, um, when he was going to originally kill, Tiffany was like, stabbing so like the 80s or whatever yeah. <laughs> get creative or whatever and then it comes back and he's like okay this is reliable this knife and stabs the chief there kills him um i did like again the creative kill of the couple that stole the money from uh jesse and jade where they shattered the glass and that fell mm -hmm. on them tyler mentioned that um, yeah and then when the dolls were having sex out I, I wrote down leave to team america world police <laughs> Like, yeah. I think they did it way better. Oh, yeah. It was super awkward in this movie. I didn't like it. I think they should have. Really? Left that I thought it was funny. Team America World. Like, that cracked then, me up. This, this was came like, out what? before Team America, though. That's what I'm saying. Team America executed it mm. properly. Like, that. Like that's how it should have been done. It's like See? watching a real sex scene in Team yeah, America. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. It was hilarious in that. But I like that scene where it's, where it's just like, you got a rubber, and he's like. I made a rubber. fucking rubber. <laughs> and he's just like, aren't you, wait a minute, no, no, aren't you made of plastic? Like, I thought that was funny. I thought it was a good good scene. Not I. But, um, <laughs> and then, yeah, I didn't like the end where Tiffany gives birth again. I'm like, why the fuck is she giving birth? Like, come on. Dude, but I love it. But that's how it progresses. And then I was not a fan of the music in this movie at all. I really? thought the music was bad. I love the music in this movie. So we, we got some differences out of nowhere at the end. And <laughs> average movie. <clears throat> average. That's my take. What's your take, dude? You have nothing written yeah, on why the paper. Do you keep why do you keep looking at that? Looking at that? <laughs> dude, You're improvising. You have your score, and that's, that's it. it, dude. <laughs> he forgot which movie we were talking you about. You want me to go, go, dude? No, I got this. <laughs> I'll go. They've already covered I to go about 97% of this movie. <sighs> That it? Bread of Chucky was, I was okay. About to go. I was about to like, I'm it, just it's, going. It's okay. It's not like anything extravagant. But I will say, this is, in my opinion, this this is where the Chucky series got like 
started getting like real bloody. Like this is where you know they turned it into a gore fest pretty much. And uh, it's it's not. It's not that good of a movie, dude. Like the kills are okay, and I they're not. Completely disagree. They're not. They're not like. I just didn't feel like it was Chucky, you know, like the first from the first three movies that I just previously watched. It's I'm because of the in. woman, dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into woman. that. And Tiffany, into yeah, that. Tiffany pissed me off. I mean, she's her voice kills me. I love her I, voice. I can't. I can't do it. I don't like, know. There's hard. some people like, well, how do you find that sexy? I'm like, dude, I find Jennifer Tilly really. Like, sexy. I can listen to Fran Drescher talk all day long, but I, love I cannot. Her voice. I don't know do what it Jennifer is. Jennifer Tilly's voice, so hers pisses me off. Shit is hot as hell to me, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and I got just watched Liar Liar at too young of an age, and they had, she has that like mm-hmm. that sex that tape hot. on the. She's like, oh, do it to oh, me, yeah, I, and I was right. like. You know, that might have been when I popped my first boner, dog. For real. Moment in history. A weird turn. Oh, dude, I'll, I'll take Tyler, a weird... when was your first Let boner? me take you a weirder <laughs> turn. The first time I... And I'm just playing. Uh, yeah. Is that all you guys said? My first boner, I think, was in church going to March, communion. March, May? Hell Which yeah, one? Dude. Yeah. Always, always got a boner when it was communion time at church, dude. Yeah, you, you just love Jesus one, Christ. Dude. Like, <laughs> got to get up and walk. <laughs> your okay. dicks are like, I'm coming. <laughs> Right there yeah, with you, I don't you, have bud. much to say about Bride of Chucky other than, you know, it's not the greatest. So. I'm, see, I'm right with Rodney. Okay, yeah. I'm I, right with Rodney. I've, always liked, right with I've always liked this movie, let's, but let's I've, I've never loved it until really recently. I've grown more of an appreciation for don't it. Don't pop any boners. Uh, not nah, too late, dude, but it's under the table, so it's good. Uh, Jen, Jennifer Tilly, I think, bottom line, was a great add into the mix. I think kicking it off with Rob, Rob Zombie, dude, was awesome. And normally, I've even talked about this, like in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. If you're doing like rock soundtracks and shit, it doesn't work. It feels out of place. Something like this that's not taking itself too seriously, the rock soundtrack really, really works. What's his name? I think it's Ronnie Yu. He's the same dude that did Freddy vs. Jason, which we'll be talking about soon. He does that in that movie, and it works because of the content. Uh, the style, man. Kind of what you were talking about. It feels more spoofy. And I kind of go into a different territory. I don't prefer this over the original style of the first three movies, but you can feel in the third movie where the shelf life is coming in. Like, I feel in the third movie, I'm like, dude, I don't know how many more of these can do. They can do. So, essentially, even though I don't like it as much, I still enjoy this, and I think it was absolutely necessary to do something a little bit different. Get a little bit more self-aware that you have a movie about a doll that's fucking killing people. It made sense to do at this point, because I bet you they came out with a four you're like all right now we're going past three this helped keep the franchise alive now it might have been briefly but if they could have executed another one like this damn it dude this was a good idea at the end of the day when you break all things down then uh speaking of tilly it was interesting to see chucky just with the counterpart in general dude it was just interesting to see him bounce his thoughts off somebody because it's just him he's solo dolo he's talking to himself he can't be alive it was cool to see chucky just being able to engage before he goes into rest mode and all that i thought that was interesting uh i don't know if i like the look better Per se, I kind of like the more classic look, but it's still badass. All those stitches and shit, he does have a good look in this movie. There's definitely nothing wrong with it. They don't jump the ship like the Michael Myers fucking movies. They elevated it and gave him a different look. That also was good. And as I've said a million times, dude, Chucky's on point. Brad Dorff on all cylinders. Really, really, really was. And, you know, just little lines, like, he's just now, it ain't the size that counts, asshole. Like, it's what you do with it, and all that shit. Fucking classic Mm. Chucky. Chucky and Tiffany, dude, in general, you kind of touched on it, are just truly perfect for each other. You see them, they're literally about to murder each other, but you're like, they still love each other. Like, now that's a marriage that I want. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, what's going on? <laughs> no, but it, it's great. It's great. And I think Chucky playing with toys was also pretty funny, honestly. Like so when she put him in like the crib, like a baby, oh. and he's just like. Just like like another name for woman, he's just typing in bitch <laughs> and like shit like that. I legitimately get a laugh off that. And I always love a good horror movie within a horror movie, like The Bride of Frankenstein, having that in there. I thought that was cool, and seeing Tiffany's genuine reactions to it before Chucky proceeds to electrocute her. What the fuck? 
it's out there, man. And I love, like you were talking about references, I love the pinhead reference when John Ritter got those in, in his face. He's like, why does that look so familiar? Again, self-aware. Great time to do it. I think y'all are underrating that aspect of it. And, dude, <laughs> I love the ending, dude. I actually love the ending. I love the ending at the graveyard. I love how Chucky gets fucking... He falls into it, and there's rats, and he's, like, losing his shit. It's funny to see Chucky, like, actually genuinely be afraid of something, too. The shovel fight, where it's, like, overhead. It looks like just two midgets fighting, almost. I thought that was fucking awesome. And the baby jumping out was, like, oh, shit. Like, I love that. I don't see how y'all are tripping. I, I, I love it. And the reason why is because it's all in what you're watching. We've already suspended belief this much. How can we not do it a little more? And for that to Judas happen, it was just funny. You just grabbed my ass. <laughs> do we? <laughs> <laughs> Some night at the Roxbury, but I was thinking about Jim Carrey, you pet detective motherfucker. Do we? Do yeah. grab my ass? But the ending, dude, is great to me. I think it's great. And it really set up for like, oh, shit, what's this kid's going to be like? Chucky's got a kid? It added in a great plot point. I was like, Until fuck, we saw the kid. Chucky's got a kid. <laughs> yeah, and then you bounce the seed of Chucky. Mm. Who wants this shit movie? First? I hate the seed of <laughs> Chucky. Everybody does, but I me. I do not like it. <laughs> uh, Is yeah, that it? I absolutely despise this movie. Everything about the, the, the son, the character... Glenn, Glenda, Glenda some, some, whatever shim. it is, yeah, it didn't do it for me. And it, like you were saying about Child's Play Three, where it was like, okay, you start to feel it fall off. Like there was still hope with Bride. Mm -hmm. There was no more hope with Seed. Once Seed, <laughs> they do started, that again very shortly too. Well, they do it a couple more times, but mm -hmm. you know they do have anyway. But it's it Seed was just <laughs> not what it should have. It shouldn't have. I didn't yeah, like it. It's bad. It it got the lowest rating out of any movie we've done for me. Um I We know what everybody's last is. I don't <laughs> I don't understand them like why the accent? Why does he, why does the kid have an accent? Maybe if he had like a Chinese accent since he was so from like Japan Taiwan. Too or something yes. like that. I don't I, he knows fucking kung Mom. fu and yeah. he, he speaks J Japanese and yeah, I did. The whole movie's a fucking train wreck. Um, I did like seeing Red Man in it, even though I don't think he did a good job acting. No. I just like seeing him in, uh, uh, what's her name? Jennifer Tilly said, mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Man. Oh, can I call you Red? I thought that was funny. That, There's a that lot of funny shit in this movie. I don't care. Um, Red and then Man. Chucky and Tiffany inseminate, <laughs> artificially inseminate her with a fucking turkey <laughs> baster or whatever. Don't breathe. Uh, Chucky's jacking off in the bathroom and the fucking paparazzi dude's like taking pictures of him. I, I, the whole movie is a fucking train wreck to me. Absolutely terrible movie. <laughs> yeah. Go Tyler and then we'll hear Brandon defend it. <laughs> yeah, this movie I don't was... have much to defend. I don't love this movie. I just don't think it's as bad as everybody looks on. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's just complete shit. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that go. Everybody uh, hates this movie. Yeah, Jennifer Tilly plays herself and T. Mm -hmm. uh, the plan is for Tiffany to turn into Jennifer and for and for Chucky to turn into Redman. Redman. Now you're saying it like Tiffany Redman. was saying it. Redman. Redman. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, Chris Redman. Then Tiffany kills Rodman. At the table by you know slicing the stomach and all his intestines. Oh, come that was out. pretty brutal. And then uh, Chucky knocks through that door and it's the, the shining moment. No, you yeah. know the shining moment of the movie. Yeah, like, no, 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 no. no the, the, yeah, reminds you of the shining moments. and uh, Chucky. Oh. You thought Chucky was gonna be like, "Here's Chucky," but he he says, "I can't think of a yeah. thing to say." <laughs> I was like, hey, there is some good moments in this movie with comedy. And That's then the ending, you actually see oh. Tiffany actually. Oh. Is becomes Jennifer Tilly, which Tiffany made it. Chucky's still fucking five movies in and can't do it. <laughs> the struggle bus, dude. Yeah, this movie. Ooh. Trash. That it? God. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> okay, I'll give some positives. I think uh, decent enough opening. It would appear that we have jumped into full-on comedy territory, which is kind of a negative for me, but. 
I will at least say there's actually some genuinely funny moments in this movie that I think don't get enough credit. I think the Glenn slash Glenda character, I've never heard anybody in the world say they like this character. My brother actually did the other day, and I almost agree with him. I don't quite like him, but let me air this out real quick. I would have preferred, especially after Bride of Chucky, you really wanted that, like, oh, shit. Like, he attacked that guy. Like, this is going to be like Chucky 2.0. And you're like, what the fuck is this? But what makes it work for me is you got to put it in Chucky's shoes. Put yourself in Chucky's shoes. He's thinking the same thing, like, my kid's going to be badass. And he's like, Chucky's like, what the fuck is this? You know that's how he feels. We're confused. Is he a guy? Is he a girl? They don't even know. And that part of it just goes with Chucky always getting fucked over. So I think it's funny. It's actually comical watching Chucky try to make the best out of whatever this kid is. Um I'm glad they're able to get Tilly back again. I don't know why you're playing footsie with me right now, Ronnie. So getting Jennifer Tilly back was a good good thing for sure. I think there's some underrated kills in this one. There's quite a few good kills in this movie actually. But the you know head getting chopped off, fucking what's his name, John Waters or whatever, like the fucking acid comes down his face and burns off. There's some good kills. Even when Chucky gets chopped off limb from limb, like I'm into that shit. Uh, of course you are. Yeah, Chucky and Tiffany's characters, they still have the chemistry. It's still firing on all cylinders, the way they're bantering back and forth at each other. Although Tilly herself in human form, I don't think, is as likable, and neither is Redman. I don't think they really deliver, and I think that's what really holds the movie back for me more than anything. It's not even Glenn Glenda, it's everybody else in the movie. Uh, rappers and horror is just typically not that great it don't and, work and this is not <laughs> this is not an outlier um much like four it kind of works as a comedy honestly i gotta say i it works for me on that front uh chucky and glenn and glenda's boys night out i thought it was fun i thought i had a good time when he took them out and they were running britney spears off the road then the john waters kill happened i had a good time with all that and he's like, the boy's a natural. All that shit. Uh, Glenda's almost like midlife crisis like turn was pretty fucking out there. That was out there like, what, mom? All that weird shit. Yeah, that. I don't know how I feel about that. That got a little fucking weird. Uh, like he said, I love the Shining reference. The Kung Fu shit is kind of like corny. I mean, I, maybe we, we haven't learned Kung Fu in horror movies. just doesn't blend a la Buster Rhymes. Trick treat, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm not even yes, going sir. to that. <laughs> uh, I like I like Chucky's surprise present at the end, kind of like just that one last little gag, like okay, you know I'm coming back, all that. Overall, see to Chucky is not that good of a movie, and I'm I wish there's a little more horror in it, even though it isn't you know void of kills. It's got some good ones, but. It's all, it's almost it's too corny. Like Bride kind of introduced it a little bit, but there was that darkness with it. Even with the sharp kills and the sharp cheddar. <laughs> a little inside joke for the boof. Uh yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll just say it's not as bad as I think everybody thinks it is. It is as long it as is. you look at it as like a pure comedy, because there's a few funny moments. It's garbage. <laughs> garbage. Okay. Curse of Chucky. You me start? Who's up? Go right. for it, dog. I got a lot to say about this one. Mm-hmm. I think I you know, too. the beginning, Nika has delivered the Chucky doll. And then you... <clears throat> the sister, Barb, is just a complete bitch. I was ready for her to die from the beginning. She wants to sell the house after Chucky kills the mom. Just for money, because her she doesn't want her kid to go to public school and stupid shit like that. The priest, when he gets in that car wreck, and the uh, they just move the hood off the, mm-hmm. and his head just <laughs> falls, falls off. off. That, I mean, that was a cool kill. Uh, the power goes out while Nick is on the elevator, and Chucky's mm-hmm. with Chucky. Uh, Jill and Barb, Jill is a fool. Beautiful mm-hmm. smoke show. Jill and Barb are webcamming each other, and then they find out that's when Barb sees that Chucky is alive, and then Chucky dumps the water on the ground and goes in the socket and electrocutes uh, Jill for a long time, really long time. Glad to have it. 
<clears throat> Barb and Nika have a conversation because the husband kind of knew about it and he put a webcam in uh, Chucky and they're having a conversation back and forth about did you know what was in Chucky and Nika knows it's uh, Charles Lee Ray and that's what she's talking about Barb thinks it's the camera so they're on two different wavelengths but kind of talking about the same thing uh, Barb takes Chucky up to the attic and she finds the knife in Chucky's outfit and then sits Chucky down and puts the knife down right next to her, to him. It, that, that was so stupid. And then Barb starts peeling the skin off Chucky, and you reveal it's his old Chucky face with the staples and stuff. I, love I thought that that, mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. And then Chucky stabs Barb in the eye, and I was like, "Hell yeah, fuck her." <laughs> uh, the guy. Uh, I forget his name, the who's married to Barb or whatever, yeah. her husband. Yeah. yeah. He goes up there, and Chucky pushes the wheelchair on him, and he does a complete front flip, which there's no way, there's no way that <laughs> would happen. And then Chucky comes over, and he's, he's awake. He was knocked out, but then he's awake. And Chucky comes over with an axe. And just hits him right in the mouth. It was a brutal, <laughs> brutal great. kill. But he like, took his jaw off. like his oh, arms jaw. aren't fucked up. Why didn't he like do something? Why didn't he? that happens like three more times in this franchise? Just like, fright like, from like, seeing why, a doll with an axe. You maybe. put your arms up and try to fight. God damn it! Like what the hell are you thinking? God damn it! Uh, then Chucky pushes Nika off the second story. I thought she died. But you know, she's bleeding out like yeah. a motherfucker. She there. got stabbed in the leg pretty good. She was bleeding out. I did enjoy the flashback scene where you mm -hmm. see that yes. you know Chucky is the reason Nika is paralyzed, and you get to see the whole. Uh, is this the right one? Yes, you're right. Wait, I'll tell you if you say it. <laughs> where it shows him leading up to uh, how he became. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah you, you get the cool scene where you get to see how Chucky becomes. Or how uh, Charles Lee Ray yeah, it was great. did everything before. Yeah, so bring something new to you the wanted table, to see a kind nice. of a before story, and you got it. Uh, Nika gets put in a mental hospital, and they take Chucky away. And uh, Chucky's in the car in that bag, and you see him breathing. And then out of nowhere, Jennifer Tilly or Tiffany comes up and kills the cop. And then I did, I did watch the end credit scene on this. Yes. Where uh, Chucky gets delivered to Andy, the original actor that played Andy. I was like, that's, you know, that's mm -hmm. pretty neat. And uh, he's talking on the phone. Chucky gets out of the box and he turns around with a shotgun and just blasts Chucky in the face. And the movie, it's over. I was, I was like, yes. Great ending. And I was like, hopefully. It's like three great endings. Yeah, back I was like, to hopefully back back. going forward, that's, that's a big scene moving on in the franchise. And we'll see where they take it from here. And, uh, <laughs> We'll get to that. Um, so, yeah, this movie surprised the shit out of me. Yeah. I was not expecting it to be as good as it was. Me too. It blew me um, away when I first watched it. I was like, direct a DVD. This is going to be it trash. It was, very, was a very good movie. Um, I like the single location for the movie. Yeah. Like, the whole movie takes place in the house. And I also like how Chucky's almost, like, on the hunt. Everyone's in the house with him, and he's just killing people one by one. Where other movies, it's been spread out. He's been traveling, and oh, he's got to kill this person to to continue his journey. Almost this mm -hmm. one, it was almost like he's hunting people to kill them. So I like that aspect of it. Um, I like the shot um, at towards, I guess, beginning middle where Chucky put the rat poison in the chili yes. and that like overhead shot where everyone's at the table yeah. and it was kind of like circling. It was almost like a uh, musical chairs with who's going to die. Like yeah. who's, who's they getting really, that chili. They really fucking get as much out of that scene as they can. Yes. And tell yeah. me that's not the cheapest looking bowl of chili ever. It looks like a Lunchable. <laughs> like uh, if they made Lunchable chili, <laughs> it even looks like tomato paste rather than chili. I like sent a text through that scene. So I missed it was, I thought it was the mom's body they put that Chucky put in it. I, I didn't pay. I didn't pay attention. I was like, <laughs> he just put poison yeah, in it. I didn't know it was South poison. Park. I was like, Scott dude, Taylor. that's that's the mom, I guess. Hey, like, good God, now, dude! I'm just the mom's now, body poisoned. The I'm fucking just now creature. finding out that it wasn't the mom. It was actually rat poison. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the it fucking was rat poison. the father died from eating human remains. <laughs> and then I don't know if this was 
intentional or not. Now it makes sense why he got in the car wreck. But yeah, like. I love this movie. 10 out of 10. I tied up that loose end, and it's just great now. I got to pay attention. Like, as as they were presenting the chili, I was like, oh, the priest has it. But then the movie made me second guess myself. And I was like, oh, yeah. Did the priest get it, or did somebody else get it? Because the little girl, yeah, I was like, this tastes funny. I'm like, did I see it wrong? I, th- yeah. I could have swore the priest Even got Even the it. guy, too. He was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> did you do the, the, this? And it's like, there ain't tomatoes in this, is there? It's like, no, so, no. Yeah. They whatever. did a great job with that. And then, yeah, like Tyler said, the priest leaves mm-hmm. car wreck, decapitated. Um, they did the thing where um, Ian, the husband of Barb, you think him and the nanny are kind of hitting it off. Mm-hmm. And then later come to find out it's a they lesbian were, affair. They were... Knocking boots between Barb and, and Jill. Well, um, scissor in action. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why I was. I was scissor me, Mister Gareth. That scene just. There's um, no way. <laughs> yeah, and then like Tyler said, I like the ending where you get more of that backstory. You figure out um, Charles Lee Ray was in love with Nika's mom. What was her name? Sarah. <laughs> And kind of held was kind of uh, holding her like hostage or whatever, um, and then she the police came or whatever, so he stabbed the baby, and that's why Nika was in a wheelchair. Um, yeah. And they kind of foreshadowed that when they were showing um, the clips of like their family reunion or whatever, and that you see that dude standing there, and you're like, who is that? You knew he had something more yeah. to do with the movie, and you find out that's fucking Chucky mm-hmm. um, at the end. Um, yeah, but. This movie surprised the shit out of me. Right. Good movie. R- random off base thing. Go. I gotta ask: Does Mr. Garrison say "scissor me timbers" in that scene? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, "scissor me timbers." Or it sounds I like that. that up no, it sounds like something. Okay. He says "scissor me" a lot. That's yeah, he does. More than one. <laughs> Miss chokes on dick. More like Miss makes me sick. <laughs> Burned her. <laughs> okay. What you got, Rodney? The curse surprised the shit out of me. It's like, a better, it's no, a better yeah, six curse. movie that's called Curse than Halloween. Six guess, movie that's called curse. curse, and they're both the six movies in the franchise. Friday the Thirteenth don't have Curse. No, nah, I'm, I'm just talking about there's okay, whatever. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw so, didn't have Curse. Yeah. Yeah, what it was going? I'm just saying, <laughs> better <laughs> than Halloween. Not even don't stupid have analogy. Curse. It's just a stu. It's a random thing. Both six entries are called Curse. That's oh. all it was. That's it. Okay, go on. So, yeah. Cheese the, puff, the dude. You're not you and you're hungry. They've been open. They're probably stale. Oh, damn. You just complained about this, and now you're going to do that. Did you smell it? You, you got you gum in your mouth. It? Someone's breaking Ralph. in. Ralph. Bring me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> do you have more? I can bring you one. Not really. All right, we're in the Aide, of is going to bring me home. <laughs> this is important. I'm out of beer. Okay. Yeah. We got 100 viewers going to watch did this. You, <laughs> did you? Uh, yeah, I said everything I needed to say. Are you say, did you say anything? Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Uh, I actually got quite a bit here. All right. I was fucking terrified of this one, kind of like I touched on for a second, because it was direct to DVD after Seed, even if I defended it marginally. Again, I don't really like it that much. It's just I got to give my little points here and there to kind of, you know, at least shine something bright on it. Uh, despite the direct dvd Dorif returned, and that was a big thing because I didn't know if that was going to be that way when I heard it was going to be direct dvd I'm like, maybe Dorif won't bother with this one. And, of course, he brought his A game, as he normally does. Uh, the look of the doll isn't bad given... That it was directed DVD. I, I don't mind it, especially when they take the fucking face off, as he alluded to. It gets really good looking, I think, then. Um, it's really cool to see Dorif's daughter in the movie. And not only is she in the movie where you're like, okay, that's cool, but damn, she can't act. She's N- great. Nika is great. She is great in the movie. And it's just like, holy shit, dude. Brad Dorif's daughter it wasn't just a throw in. It's not just a cool thing. It's she. It's cool, and on top of that, she's fucking cool. And she's great in the role. The role. The role. Um, and w- one thing I really loved about this movie is it was a throwback to the slow build of the original. By this time, we were ready. You know, like you can go back and do that again. Now, I know I said that kind of got old and it got played out, but now we're ready for that after watching these two more comical and tone movies. 
I thought that was great. Um, the opening theme, surprisingly, isn't like great, but it's pretty good. Direct to, t- direct to video, I thought it wasn't going to be all that, but it's surprisingly good. More surprises to come. Um, and it just dialed back the silliness and got a little bit darker, which I really enjoyed. It was refreshing after the last two. Um, Chucky under the kid's blanket, I thought, was real creepy. When he was just sitting there with her, like, and you're just waiting. Like, is he going to pop out? What's he going to do? What's Chucky going to do? I like that because I haven't had that kind of anticipation in a while. Um, the random lesbos, that was interesting. Mm-hmm. That came out of nowhere. Um, and then just Nika, dude, when she was trying to get upstairs to the bar, just ditching the wheelchair. Like, that whole scene was pretty intense. Like, like is she going to make it? If she does make it, what the fuck is she going to do, dude? She's a cripple. I thought that was interesting. And, of course, we know what happened from Tyler and if you've seen the movie. But also another touch that we didn't talk about is just when Chucky bounced the eyeball down the steps. I thought that was kind of cool. That it wasn't just, oh, my God, that was a good kill. He had more to give. He's like, oh, and here's the eyeball as it just bounces down. Yeah, I thought, one thing about that, I had something written down about that. Mm-hmm. Another mistake. Mm-hmm. When he stabs her in the eye, her eye's green. And then the eye that rolls down the stairs is like bright fucking blue. I don't if know you, if you if, caught that. No, if, if red mixes with green, dude, on the color <laughs> scheme, it turns it blue, dude. Come on now, get out of here. When you rip an eye out, does it change colors? Like, it was a completely no, different know. color. I don't know if you... It does change colors, too. Experience? No, I, oh. I've read a book about eye... I, eye extractions? <laughs> I, I, he, he, he's a... I was about to say a dentist. That is not what works on eyes, Brandon. <laughs> okay. Um shit, now you don't make me lose my motherfucking spot. Uh let's move Ch- on. Chucky okay. is <laughs> Chucky is pretty fucking brutal in this, dude. We kinda touched on that. Like there's some brutal fucking murders in this. And uh Chucky's pulling out all the fucking stops in this one, dude. He's over here like eating keys and shit, dude. He ain't playing fucking games. And you know, it's unique giving Chucky a handicapped person to toy with. I mean, it just feels like it kind of evens the playing field a little bit. You know, we always have these people, even though he's got the strength, he's got people who can just pick them up, throw them, and he always feels at a disadvantage. But going up against a handicapped person, bringing them more down to size, I thought was kind of interesting. It was a little bit of a change of pace. I like the headless Chucky sitting up in the background after Nika thought everything was okay. You just see it kind of blurry in the background. He sits up, puts his head back on. It's like, dude, <laughs> that is the Chucky I fucking love. Uh, I like the transition after she asked Chucky if he was waiting on a sign from God. And then out of nowhere, as she says that, the light flips on. And that was her sign from God. She's like, I gotta get in this fucking elevator, dude. That was amazing. And I love how it ends on a dark note with him possessing Alice and getting to do that kind of shit. And then, of course, the other endings he talked about. Fucking great, dude. What? You all right, Rodney? (laughs) I said transition, and he just lost his shit. <laughs> I'm going to break out that certain mattress. <laughs> <laughs> Can I not say transition? I don't know. Uh, Moving on. I'll to review the tape and see what y'all laughing about. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Cult of Chucky. You don't got to review the tape. Oh, I will. It's going to happen. I got to. Mm. <laughs> Cult of Chucky. Who wants it? Anybody? Awful. That it? All right, I'll go. Um, okay, go. Dog shit. Right, uh, I, I was, it's terrible. I was really happy with uh, they bringing Andy back. I was like, Andy's back. He's going to kick ass and no, do his thing. It did not happen at all. Trash. The coolest part about Andy was he keeps Chucky's head alive in a safe, and then he has all these weapons to torture Chucky with. He tries to convince everyone that like Chucky's real, Nika's not you know, crazy, but no one believes him. You, you know? took my one good point of the movie, so now I will only bash on it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I make good points. The, they had the group therapy, and they bring the Chucky dolls. Stop bringing in Chucky dolls to people that are traumatized. <laughs> That's so stupid. This is not the move, bro. Then Nika slits her wrist, tries to kill herself, and then Chucky saves her life. And you're like, That's a good guy right there. Yeah. You know what? Chucky's actually a cool doll. He's a good guy, doll. And he wrote in the blood, uh, not so fast yeah, or something like not that. Not so fast. And then he goes down the hall and kills that old lady and writes, the same Chucky way. did it to try to frame <laughs> Nika. Uh, yeah. And he, again, that girl More freaks people. out. Uh, but Chucky is the reason she freaked out. And they we having a party? They, they take her Get to that little, uh, little doctor's <laughs> office and they drug her. 
and they make her paralyzed where she can she can't move but you know she can feel everything like in every horror horror movie and uh chucky uh throws that thing up breaks the glass the gla- all the glass comes down and kills her like in You're the previous like, movie yeah i've seen this yeah, before it's <laughs> crap you find out the doctor's just a real creep you know hypnotizing nika and stuff and then you know playing with her i guess where are these coming from uh the the nika face stomps on the doctor when she's possessed by by chucky pulled a michael myers yeah i think it was more brutal than the michael myers face. oh come on no it was that was one of the best kills in the whole franchise again i put the kills are definitely more brutal and then at the end nika and tiffany are human bodies of chucky and Tiffany. And then my last comment is the ending sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I'll just fucking jump into this one real quick and talk about some dog shit real quick. I feel the direct to DVD feeling a little more. I just fucking do. I. Damn it. I got to say, Tyler took my only good point. I was trying to at least throw something good in here. Him and Chucky talking was cool. Movie just has a hard time pulling me in after Andy and Chucky's talk. I feel like I kind of come a little bit closer. I'm like, okay, now we're getting somewhere, and it drags me right back down. I'm like, okay, now we're getting somewhere, and boom, it drags me right back down. It's like I can never get going with this movie. I've never had a movie make me want to look away from the screen and play with my phone maybe more than this movie. I mean, it is rough, dude. I don't like Nika getting railed in her wheelchair bro oh, that <laughs> oh. <laughs> i'm not feeling that dude it was just kind of like this is just kind of weird i don't know it didn't do it for me it didn't do it for me no boners no not on this one dude uh i mean i i like having tiffany back that's kind of cool you know uh I like the Cuckoo's Nest reference. I mm-hmm. do about you know Brad Dorf because Brad Dorf was in Cuckoo's Nest. We got a plus here, guys. Don't worry about it. Uh, the movie just feels flat, and it just never gets going, no matter how hard it tries. And the multiple Chuckies doesn't do it for me. It sounds At cool. It sounds cool on paper, but it doesn't work. And there's something off about Brad Dorf in this movie, man. It's not that he does terrible, but this is the first time he doesn't knock it out of the park. And I don't think it's necessarily his fault. A lot of it is in those Chucky scenes. It's almost like he records a line, he records a line, he records a line for each Chucky. But the people that are putting it together don't space it out right. It's like as soon as he does it, they jump in with another voice. It's like there's no in between to where the other Chuckies can hear it and then react. It's like there's no timing. The timing is just jumbled together. It doesn't feel right. And Chucky, the ending, and then when it finally gets going, the decisions they make with trapping Andy and Chucky becoming Nika, it's like full <laughs> circle, but it's just fucking weird. Like, you're telling me this movie's going to end and it's going to open up with Nika and fuck as Chucky and Tiffany. And there's a Tiffany doll in the back, too. I don't even understand what these movies are doing anymore. And it just, it's, I don't want to fucking lead off of the movie like that. You completely revived the movies and curse and then showed a complete just go-to motherfucking... This is, this is the best example of how you can kill a franchise after reviving it literally with one movie. And Kyle coming in the picture, she was cool as the end credit, but at the same time, it's like, oh, another person that's older and can't act now and we'll force her into the movie too because she hadn't acted in fucking 30 years. It's not going to be good. I... If they come out with another one after this, I'm worried. This movie legitimately fucked up my night the other night. After I got done watching <laughs> this, I was, like, tired. I was like, I'm just going to go to bed. I don't know what to do with myself. I was not a fan of Cult of Chucky this time or any other time I've seen it. It's oh, garbage. Damn. I don't Yo, understand. Some people like this over Curse. And you can go to hell. You can go to hell and you die. I'm not a fan of this. Y'all are shitting all over it. Um, I didn't hate it. It wasn't good. But I didn't hate it like you all did. It was. I don't know if I hated it. Me... It was average. I hated it. Oh yeah, I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. Um, can you think of a more perfect situation for Chucky than in a sane asylum with crazy people? A military camp? No, that <laughs> is. That no, is I'm talking about for place. Chucky. No, yeah, nobody's yeah, like, gonna like believe no one's him. gonna believe a schizophrenic saying their dolls talking to him, and they're gonna let them continue to act like yeah. the dolls their baby, and like that was the perfect. Set up for a ch- for a murderous possessed doll. Yeah, they just um, did it wrong. 
Um, the whole multiple Chucky started off. I liked how that started with two in the insane asylum, and you know one's alive and one's not, but you're like, which one's alive, which isn't? And then when they're all starting to come alive at the end, that's when it lost me. I was like, okay, yeah. I don't like this. One's got his fucking hair cut short. No, uh, you're right, pal. You, I don't yeah, know. you that whole scene, time. they're like, <laughs> it's got, it's pretty funny, but it's the way the lines are delivered. It feels yeah. off to me. It's too like, it's like if you were writing something. It'd be with no spaces. Like, it's just clammed together the way they talk to each other. And then I, I just feel like this whole the whole movie, it's like they outsmarted themselves when making it. Like, they tried to do too much, and it just didn't work I 100% at agree all with for that. me. Um, the whole Dr. Foley, when he was kissing, making out with Nico, yeah. and she's fucking hypnotized. I hated that. And Chucky's like, fuck this dude. <laughs> yeah, Chucky doesn't even like that. And Chucky's a psycho. Prick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... Not too much positive to say about this movie, but I didn't hate it as much as you, Brandon. It's fucking ass cheeks, dude. Not and then I did the like seeing kind. Kyle at the end, even though you're right, like she can't act. It did almost feel forced, but it was refreshing for that two seconds yes. to like. And that's see why her. it's a positive. I wrote down it's cool, but then I was like, but let me get into why it's also not cool. Because I'll probably bring her back, and she hasn't acted in thirty years, and now you have a movie that's led by people that don't know how to act anymore. And then You're setting yourself up for failure. It's cool as a cameo, but mm, Alex Vincent forgot how to act. He was terrible <laughs> in this movie with his acting. Yeah, it's we'll such high hopes for him. To we'll see the same with Kyle. He's cool to be like, like friend this or whatever he says before he shoots him. I can't remember the exact line. That's not it, man. Yeah, that's about all I have was, to say. It was friend this, Chucky. No, that's what he said. No, nah, he says right. suck on, on this. To the remake. Are you just not going to say anything, Ronnie? He did. He I started. Did, I, didn't, I didn't like, did I didn't yeah. like the... Did you say anything? The he, he said, like, I don't like this movie. I said it's awful. He gave a really good take on it. <laughs> yeah, he nailed he it. He gave his Rodney take. But right. pretty much hit the nail on the head. It's terrible. Remake. Right. Not, I did, that was not the nail I was going for. That, you absolutely nailed it saying... I'll it start awful. with the remake. <laughs> The new Chucky doll is all high tech. I didn't like the look of it. Mm, no, it's no, crap. No. Andy. I like it in the beginning. You see the Chucky doll getting made, and you see that employee getting his ass ripped by the boss. That w sucks. W so he takes all the safety protocols off the Chucky, and then he commits suicide. Um, I really love the cop in this movie. He's my favorite character in the whole franchise. I really enjoyed this cop. What? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. He took that to an extreme. Yeah. I like Chris Sarandon's version of Mike so much more than the new cop. Oh, I love the new cop. Uh, and then, of course, giving Black a 13-year-old a, a, <laughs> a doll as a present, like, that's just, I'd be pissed if my mom and dad gave me a, a doll when I was 13. Uh, let's see here. Of course, of course, the boyfriend is a jerk. He's so a I was ready. For, dude. He's the one person that I wanted to die the most in this franchise. And then uh, I really wanted him to die painfully. <laughs> and then you find out that he's married and has kids. And then, oh, uh, now it's really old. Yeah, it, it was bullshit. And then he's up, he's up on the ladder trying to take all the the Christmas lights down, and Chucky bounces the ladder, and he. He thinks it's raccoons or something. Then he falls off the ladder and snaps both his legs. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then oh, Chucky yeah. is about Boner. to... <laughs> oh, yeah. And then Chucky turns on that tiller, and it just wraps the Christmas lights up and starts pulling it towards him. And I was like, get him, get him, get him. And then Chucky's on top of him because he's holding the tiller back, which is smart. You know, some guy's actually trying to stop dying. And then uh, <laughs> Chucky's about to stab him. He lets his hand off and gets his fucking head ripped off by the tiller oh. and then Chucky stabs him 13 times I was like that's the way you kill someone that I don't like in a movie mm -hmm. he puts the boyfriend's face on a watermelon and gives it to <laughs> Andy great. Andy as a present I didn't like how they named him Andy I guess it's a remake but I mean yeah. that's I don't know The and then they put the, the watermelon head in wrapping paper mm. And he delivers. I know he didn't try to. The mom, which I love, Aubrey Plaza. If you're watching this, oh, I love you. I love you're you. Amazing. I am the same you're way. Beautiful. I don't know about Josh, but like we might fight over. Like, no, no, I love her more. Have you seen every episode of Parks and Rec? <laughs> oh, she's. I great, have, dude. She's That's where I fell I, in love with her. I love her so much. And uh, they give the gift to the cop's mother. Yeah. Which is a terrible idea. I know they didn't want it to happen. 
I hate the maintenance guy. What a creep. Jack Black, bro. That dude should have been Jack Off, Black. Yeah. If it was Jack like Black, him. this movie would have skyrocketed for me. <laughs> the maintenance it guy like, well, tries Black to fix he tries to fix uh up the Chucky to get him working right to sell on eBay to make money. And then his death, uh he gets sliced up by Chucky. Mm. And then he gets on top and he's holding on to a water pipe and Chucky turns the heat on it. And then under him there's like a bandsaw or yeah, a bandsaw going and it, He's his hands are heating up, so he's gonna have to let go. I don't understand why he didn't just, you know, crawl forward a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, that would have made sense. These people that die in this movie are stupid. See, I think you're you're kind of underestimating the shock and being scared though, because you don't think straight in high pressure situations. Uh, I'm not saying everybody yeah, would have this reaction, but. Like, I would think it's like when people are just like, "Why wouldn't you just shoot him?" It's like, "Cause not everybody's a killer, bro. Not everybody's built like that, and they're fucking terrified. And they don't know what to do with their brain." Ain't. I would think, "Don't land on the saw. Move out of the way of the <laughs> no, saw." No, or like for swing sure, my, swing myself or something. You're just terrified. And then they're at the, up. they're at that uh, store, and then the, I thought I was like, "The damn cop got killed by a toy helicopter." That's how the cop's gonna go. My oh, favorite yeah. ca- uh, character. I thought the same thing. The supermarket scene is great. Chucky gets Andy, Andy's mom, and everyone's leaves, and Andy's like, yeah, you're right. We we better get out of here because Chucky put the place on lockdown. It's all the doors shut, but they put a sharp uh, shopping cart under one of the like garage doors, and Andy's like, yeah, you're right. Let's get out of here and call the police, and the kids go under, and then Andy moves the shopping cart so the door shuts. I'm like, you just locked yourself in the fucking – store with Chucky and all the other toys. Like, that was a stupid move. I love the fight scene between Chucky and Andy and then Andy's mom. And then uh, <laughs> Chucky dives at Andy and the cop's not dead. He comes up and he just blasts Chucky. And then the mom rips Chucky's head off and you think, you're like, okay, you know he's not dead. Chucky never dies. But that's why the ending suggests that Chucky's still alive. So uh, maybe we'll get another Chucky movie in the future. He downloaded to the cloud. That's what everybody's saying. Yeah, I believe it. The cloud. I enjoyed this one. Yeah, you had a lot of good points, Brandon. What? <laughs> Joke, because he talked for so long. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm becoming Rodney. Brandon. <laughs> What's happening? I. I actually like this a lot more than I thought I was going to. Because uh, did, did you go to theaters with me to see this? I've never seen this movie before in my life. Oh, so yeah, this movie called Child's Play. <laughs> no, okay, so I thought it was you. I can never remember who I saw movies with. But yeah, this, it, it was me. I was pretty surprised at how good it was. Uh, the kills, for the most part, like what you were talking about with that the pipe at the top how yeah. he turned on yeah. the heat and everything he got I buzz that was pretty yeah. you know smart dude i was like oh shit yeah, okay that's a good so, idea because i was really worried by the trailers of this movie that with them going with technology as opposed to a human soul going into the doll like they, they were just going to ruin everything but they didn't do too bad the acting could have been better some of the acting was kind of cringeworthy mm-hmm. but i mean it is a horror movie after all, you know, dealing with Chucky, so but I don't know, dude. Like it it was it was pretty pretty solid film. I mean it wasn't no three, but No, nah, it's solid. It, it was definitely better. It could have been a lot worse. It was better than what it, it, it had business being. Mm-hmm. Okay. As um, a remake. I would describe this movie as entertainably watchable. Yeah. It wasn't great. It did surprise me. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was um i will say that i think the movie would have been better if it was its own entity instead of trying to remake the first chucky if it was its own sci-fi horror movie instead of trying to reproduce a cult classic i think the movie would have been um a lot better um i got some real strong um from the group of kids i got some real strong like it and uh, like Stranger Thing vibes mm-hmm. from them. Um, I didn't like how Andy was older in this movie instead of the younger kid. I think it works better as a younger kid. Um, but overall, the movie's entertainably watchable. Some some 
some good deaths and kills in this movie. Hundred percent. Um, I I I loved how they brought the Orion logo back. That throwback Orion logo. That immediately, you know, just for somebody that's watched these movies, you're like, oh, okay. I like how they did that. So this is a little tidbit. I actually enjoy that they switch things up. Honestly, the older style, obviously I like it better, but don't try to do the same thing. You're not going to match what Brad Dorif did. No. So you got to do something different or you'll fail miserably. The new theme is actually dope. Chucky's kind of just been looming around with no real theme since the first one. Like I said, I don't know why they didn't continue that. The new theme is really, really good. <sighs> Look at the doll could use some work. It really could. The doll's not all that. Love Aubrey Plaza as Andy's mom. I've heard a bunch of people say, I just feel like she's more of a sister. And I can tell you all had some old-ass moms growing up. My mom had me when she was 19, and we had the same kind of relationship. It almost feels like an older sister because you're kind of just thrown into that kind of thing. It's not going to feel like an old lady because not all moms are fucking... 35 when they have you, okay? 22 here. Yeah, it's, that's just kind of the relationship you have. Like, it's like that. It's, it's believable. I think the people that don't think that probably have older moms. You might be like, well, shit, yeah, my mom is in her 80s right now. <laughs> Not to that extent. But, yeah, I think people get mixed up on that front from personal experiences. For me, Aubrey Plaza definitely works because it's a very similar relationship I had with my mom growing up. Um, Andy is great in this movie. I can't say enough about that. I think he's really, really good. The guy who plays Andy, I mean, he showed out for me. I thought he was amazing feeling. I actually think he's better than the original Andy, and I stand by that. Um, I don't like Detective Mike quite as much. He just what doesn't. The fuck, bro. He just doesn't hit the same levels that Chris Sarandon did. I don't really almost. I almost don't even believe him as like a detective. He like was when a I watch detective. When I when I when I think of as, Chris Sarandon. As a detective. Yeah, yeah. Chris Sarandon actually feels like a detective to me, and he feels that role perfectly. Detective Mike, I almost feel like he would have been better off if he was just like the curious neighbor or something. Like, I, I didn't his really. Character, but yeah, I'm he was as okay. As a detective, it didn't really work. As his me. profession, he was terrible. Yeah. Um, Mark Hamill, obviously, kind of piggybacks off what I was saying. He's no Brad Dorif, but he's fine for what he is given and the kind of you know role he's playing. Um, I genuinely like Chucky and Andy's relationship growing. You know, it's a different change of pace. You get to see that, and you didn't get to see that in other movies. Because, you know, Chucky's just bad out the fucking gates. So, you know, it's an interesting thing, and that's why we have remakes. Um, I love when Chucky, when they're playing, you know, chess or whatever it is, maybe checkers, and when the cat strikes Andy, and Chucky's eyes just kind of light up, and he's like, what is that? Because he don't know. Like he's genuinely curious. Like, what's oh, that the, blood? Yeah, like, oh, blood. he heard Andy, and you, you're just like, oh shit! Like, here we go. He's kind of catching on. Like I, that scene kind of gives me chills a little bit. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. Hell no. I'm yeah. Saying, Chucky kills a cat in this movie. Yeah. Didn't bother me at all. Yeah. <laughs> Good but job on you not being a dog. If it's a uh, dog, I would have hated um, this movie. Yeah. There's honestly a few legitimately funny moments in this man there really is uh, something for me that goes off that y'all didn't say anything about probably you don't like the movie having texas chainsaw massacre 2 on the tv was cool as fuck yeah that I... was awesome having that go on dude all those scenes coming back to me like it was yesterday was we just talked about it it feels like yesterday but that was such a great choice and then you have chucky coming in thinking he's normal great plot point there which leads to Chucky making you feel bad for him. You're like, oh my God, he's put in this room. I remember being in the theater with him, and I was like, do I feel bad for Chucky right now? I never thought in a million years I'd say that, but I did. And that sounds like it'd be terrible. It would be in the if it was Brad Doris, Chucky, like, oh, I'm in timeout. It would have been garbage. But again, remakes, people, they're supposed to do something different. We don't want the same shit. And if you do, you're fucking up. Just make a fucking sequel at that point. Um, I like how Chucky's eyes, I like the touch of them turning red when he gets evil. It's such a simple thing, but, you know, it's just like, oh, shit. Like, it's about to go down right about now. Uh, the friends, I think, could have been a little bit better. I don't necessarily hate them, but they didn't bring anything new to the table. I like the friends. I wish I could have liked them a little bit more for me personally. Like I said, don't dislike them, but I wish they would have been as strong as Andy because Andy was great in this movie. Um, I wish Chucky would have evolved more as the movie went on. Now, he is a robot in this movie. He's not 
you know, a human being and a doll. But this is supposed to be next level smart. You know, like it, you can see him growing as the movie goes on. Now, if they make sequels and then he's full blown Chucky, like we saw on the old ones, but with a different flavor, maybe this won't be as much of a negative. But this is the only one I would have liked. He, you kind of got that, like when uh, he has the Mike's w- mom in the car, and he's like, "This is my friend," and all that. But I, you didn't get it enough. I wish there had been more of an evolution of his character to where he'd have been his own weird kind of wacky Mark Hamill version of what Brad Dorif was, and he could have had some fun with it rather than just being plain Jane with it. Um, I like how Chucky was able to control everything, how he could tap into things, those helicopters, the car, all that. I thought that was really interesting. Uh, the Zedmart massacre, I think, should have been more of a massacre. Only like two or three people die in that whole thing, and there's hundreds of people. You could have had absolute carnage in that scene, and everybody like made it out. Now, you see for like a quick brief second somebody getting dragged down an aisle, but you could have went all the fuck out with that, and I'm disappointed that they didn't, honestly. Uh, they should have offed Aubrey Plaza, and I stand by this. I love Aubrey Plaza, but that would have been the last like punch the movie needed. You'd have been like, Oh, shit. And I know that sounds terrible, but even in the first one, you lost the mom, not to death, but you brought back a great character in the next one. But that would give something for Andy to deal with in the beginning, to have troubles with of the next one if they ever make one. And Aubrey Plaza just getting off. Like, I remember seeing the trailer. She's, like, freaking out on the crane, like, looking around. That would have just brought the movie to another, like, emotional place and ramped it up to 11. I think that would have been great. And I like how the kids collectively, dude, just destroyed the buddy doll. They all were just smashing it to pieces. I thought that was a clever, not really clever, but just a good way to end it, just signifying them just like, let's just fucking tear this up. I think that was dope. And. You done? I think we're done with our discussion. On to rankings. Rankings? Who wants to go first? Ronnie Ronnie wants wants to go first. You got that eye, the look in your eye, like, fucking let me go. You got the eye of the tiger right now. Okay. I'm Rodney, and this is Box Office Banner, and okay. we're going to do the rankings for Child's Play. Which is all you have written on your paper that you were peeking at <laughs> through for each movie. <laughs> all right, so are we starting with least? Yeah, first to yes. first. Who is first. first? So the best one. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give Child's Play, uh, The Cult of Chucky, a solid 3.5. And that's Damn, just dude, that's only because <laughs> I do not like that movie at all. Oh, is that That's what it the is? only reason why. Mm. Uh, next, I'm giving The Seed of Chucky a 4.0. Also because I don't like it. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Every time. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Bride of Chucky, I actually gave a pretty low 4.5, but that's uh, because it's. I liked it a lot better when I was younger watching it. And I'm the opposite. Older. When I was younger, I was like, this ain't serious enough. It's too jokey. Now I'm like, I get it. I really do. Yeah, I can. I Complete can. opposite. So, All right. but then, uh, then I give the Curse of Chucky a six point oh, which is pretty solid. Hey, it's I good. Mean, it surprised me enough to to give it a solid rating. Warrant like that. that, yeah. Uh, and then I have the remake also at a six point oh. Uh, like I said, it was surprisingly good. You know, in so it, surprising it was barely good. Well, it, it was a lot better yeah. than it should have been. Yeah, it, it I got you. Getting no, like nine or eleven rating. Dude, it's an eleven. But, <laughs> uh, then I'm gonna give Child's Play two a seven point oh. Uh, like we were talking about the whole, I think the chemistry build up between Kyle and Andy kind of right. made everything a pretty solid choice on the rating for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Number two. Mike be, Discipline. Mike Discipline, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So my my <laughs> second is going to be Child's Play, the original. And I give that a 7.5. And that, I mean, it's a classic. Love it. It's great. Uh, but then Child's Play 3 comes in on top okay. with a solid 8.0. Oh, three. Interesting. Tyler, you want to go or you and me too? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. Um <laughs> Number eight, Seed of Chucky. It blew ass. It was. <laughs> it, I gave it a four point oh, and that's me being a sweetheart. Seven, you Cult really of are, Chucky. Though. Blue ass too. Easily the two worst. Four point five for me. 
Uh, number six, Curse of Chucky, 5.0. Oh, oh, Lord. That's pretty low. That's kind of shit. 5.0 <laughs> average. Bride of Chucky comes in at five with a 5.5. 5. Number four, Child's Play, the original. Gave it a six. Oh, wow. Number three, Child's God. Play 2. Gave it a 6.5. Don't do it. Child's Play 3 is number oh. two with a 6.5. The remake. How did I know? Oh, a seven. How did God. I know? God. Don't give me that look. We got Ralph in the kitchen. Like, He's just I just hear Happy what? Gilmore like, He's too old. But that's like Tyler saying, It's too old. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and my overall ranking for the franchise, I gave a 5.5. 5. Did you give your overall ranking? Yeah, I gave mine a 6.5. Oh, I couldn't did remember. You did not. You yeah, well, not. it's there now. What uh, do you got, Josh? So, me and Tyler started off on the same same foot. I think everybody does, really, the, for the first two. C to Chucky, I gave it a 3.5. Fucking terrible. Blech. Seven, coming in at seventh place, I have Colt a Chucky, and I gave that a five. I think it's a Average movie. Nothing good, nothing too bad. I know y'all hate it, but... Um, coming in at sixth place, I have Bride of Chucky at a 5.5. Coming in at fifth place is the remake, Tyler. Hey, I love Aubrey Plaza, call. man. <laughs> uh, remake comes in at the fifth place. Uh, number four is... Um, Child's Play 3, which I gave a originally a 6.5. Like I said, the farther I get away for, from it, the higher it goes. So I actually bumped that up to a 7 mid-podcast. Oh, nice. Um, third place, Curse of Chucky with a 7.5. Very that, surprising that movie. That is some love that it deserves. Um, yeah, it's that's a good movie. Um, coming in in second place is Child's Play 2, and I gave it an 8 overall. Greatest. And first place is the OG original Child's Play with an 8.5. Better rankings, Ralph? I disagree with it, but it doesn't Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. There's going to be a lot higher rankings per usual because I'm the horror guy of the group. Um, and we'll start off with the worst ranking yet, as I say that. Uh, the A for me is Cult of Chucky. This is a 2.5 out of 10. My worst ranking yet. I do not like this movie at all. God, it is a dull fest and terrible decision fest. Uh, seven is Seed of Chucky. And this ain't even average to me. It's right barely at good because I watch it on a comedy level. And it's got some good comedy in it. 6.0 out of 10, but I get the hate. Trust me, I do. At number six, I have the remake, which is a 7.0 out of 10. I think it gets a little worse every time I watch it, honestly. It's good for what it is, and it was a good decision to go back to the style, but you can only achieve such levels with this style. And then, you know what? The last five, they are all great movies to me. Number five... I have Curse of Chucky at an 8.0 out of 10. Return to form of the original. This is by far the most shocking movie on this list. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Direct a DVD after Seed? You came out with this? Damn, son. Number four is Bride of Chucky. Also at an 8.0 out of 10. The older I've got, the more I've realized, just like with the remake, it was a good idea to do that. Dude, the formula of the first three was running stale. It was good to jump ship and be a little more self-aware. You got a Chucky doll running around killing people. Have some more fun with it. I mean, come on. Don't take yourself too seriously. I know the first three didn't, but this is a little more self-aware. I get it. Bride of Chucky, 8.0. Number three is Child's Play 3 at an 8.0 out of 10. This is just as good as the first two, really. The the last three, it's it's pretty tight. But what holds back three for me is the characters, honestly, outside of Chucky. They just don't compare. 8.0 out of 10 as well. Number two, we're going to jump in the nine territory with the original. Child's Play gets a 9.0 out of 10. I mean, what else can you say about this movie? It's one of my favorites. Yes, I won't say exactly where it is in that equation, but it's it's up there for me. 9.0 out of 10. Great build-up and great introduction. And then number one, Child's Play 2. Honestly, it's a tough matchup, but I think the ending of Child's Play 2 gives it that extra .5 because it's just fucking magical. Child's Play 2 is a 9.5 out of 10. 
and that would be my ranking. We each had a different and Charles I, for number one. What's your yeah. ranking of the Good franchise? Friday. The ranking of the franchise is a 9.0 for me. I adore this franchise. I love five out of the eight films. I like two other ones, and I absolutely despise Cult of Chucky. It's a trash can. It literally desto- destroyed bad. a franchise <laughs> with one movie. Good Lord. <laughs> Uh, and the B.O.B. ranking. Y'all ready for this? Nah, nah, nah. I think I do that every week. I can't help it. It's like an itch on my brain. Uh, B.O.B. gives it a 7.0 out of 10 collectively. So there you have it. Child's Play is a good franchise. I think we've all gave these good franchise well, it's ratings. You, but it's, you I was going to say, but it was nine. me. <laughs> but it was because of me. But yeah, well, I didn't do that with, uh, well, I did and I did it with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But yeah, that's essentially it, guys. And we will be right back with you with the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise coming up next week. I hope you motherfucking Freddy heads or Fred heads, as they call them, are ready for that shit. Anything else to add? Maybe the Instagram, the oh, YouTube, yeah. or follow what? us on YouTube. Subscribe, like my Mimi says. And I about forgot again about this. But go so, ahead, and <coughs> subscribe do on this after now. YouTube at Box Office Banner. You can watch the podcast there. There, sounds like so country. Uh, on Instagram, day, buddy. Box Office Banner official with underscore in between each uh, words. I post clips on there, and then I'll, when the podcast comes out, I'll post a link to the podcast so you can watch the full thing. Movie of the week? Movie of the week? What you got, Tyler? Shit. Run it in, dude. I got the movie Blow. Mm, with, he with loves Johnny it. Johnny Depp. It's based on a true story, and this movie has some highs and some lows. Literally. Uh, he plays this Downers guy named George, George Young. George Young. Who became one of the largest importers of Colombian cocaine to the United States, forever changing the face of drugs in America. Set in uh, the 70s and 80s, blow traces, drug wars, blow... Now I lost my Hang spot. On. Did you did you watch <laughs> this movie? Or yeah, it's actually <laughs> it's actually in my top fifty, and it's pretty high up there. This movie makes you feel so many different emotions. I love this movie. One of Johnny Depp's best movies by far. Really, really? That right? he's, he's every amazing. Pirates of the Caribbean's better. No, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, who's next? Definitely not. Uh, I'll go. Fuck it. Uh, Let's get ready to rumble. That's right. I have ready to rumble. A little forgotten comedy from back in the day. It doesn't quite hit the heights that I thought of it when I was younger because I was deep into wrestling. And I was like, this is a fucking 10 out of 10. I was so into it. But there's some actually pretty cool wrestling action in this movie as well. David Arquette and Scott Kahn do a decent enough job as, you know, the down-on-their-life losers that are working for a fucking septic company. Yeah, there's there's some pretty good moments in this. It's pretty funny. And, of course, Oliver Platt. Actually, dude, I love Oliver Platt in this movie. I think he really makes it. He's just entertaining as fuck to watch, dude. It's Jimmy the King. What would Jimmy do? Yeah. Damn, dude. I can't say much else about this movie, man. It's just a really good throwback comedy. Yes, that I would be daddy. Thank, thank you, Arya. Ready to rumble, man. I think it's a little forgotten. Great, especially great if you like wrestling. If you like wrestling and you haven't seen this comedy, you are fucking slipping, dude. And that's the bottom line, because Brandon said so. What you got here, okay. buddy? I'm going to do a box office banner first. Okay. I'm going to put myself on the spot. A movie you don't like? (laughs) My movie of the week, randomly selected out of this thing, is Evan Almighty. (laughs) Not quite Bruce Almighty. Yeah, the sequel to Bruce Almighty, which is I think is a really good movie. Bruce Almighty's great. Bruce Almighty's pretty good. How, how do we feel about Evan great. Almighty? Awful. It's okay. Uh, it's not awful. I won't say it's definitely. A, I'd give it a 5.5. I'd give it a 6.0. I'd give it a 5.5. Two point. All right, no. repick. Repick. No, this movie this sucks. Movie. Uh, Steve Carell, man. How are you going to hate on him? It's okay. Dude, it's got he's, John he's Goodman. He's completely different in this movie than he was in mm. Bruce Almighty. That's very true, though. Yeah. Ah. But yeah, I, I think it's a decent movie. 
Um, it's okay. There's got some funny parts in it. Not as good as Bruce Almighty. He but. he got a bad draw. I guess it could have <laughs> um, been worse, but that's definitely well, that's not my hey, upper echelon of movies. I I'd, for sure. I'd, <laughs> I take it as a good draw because I've seen that movie. What do you think about Envy? Unlike, Unlike half Envy? the other movies Jack that Lord? were yeah. around Bird that movie. movie, everybody hates that movie. But you almost pulled that, and I was like, "That's a trash one." I'm like, well, not to me. I wouldn't have known. It's good. I think it's good. Oh, you got Fletch too. Fletch is great. Yeah, Fletch almost named. All right, your turn, Rod. My movie of the week is. The Storm's Martian. winner. Oh, good uh, one. Okay. And, I mean, the director's cut of The Martian. <clears throat> I have The Martian. You don't, I was going to say, Brandon's got that. How do you? Let, I actually it. don't have The Martian. Oh, so <laughs> I don't, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, God. The Martian. It's one of those weird Ridley ones Scott I don't know. Matt Damon's in it. Uh, Matt Damon. Got Donald it's Glover throughout the movie, which is awesome. But he gets left on Mars mistakenly for dead. How? And yeah, well, <laughs> I like, but I, yeah, you've seen the movie. Did, distance. Did, did you see no. the movie, you know why, but like the way you just said it, like, how do you forget someone on Mars? Well, they didn't Mars forget him. Do, they did leave. Here's the question. They had to leave. Yeah. How do we forget a co host in a car? <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> Yeah. Check that. out The Martian if you haven't seen it. It's great. Really the Martian's good. phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's, Top it's 50? an emotional roller coaster of a movie. Top, Top 50? Hondo? Question? Uh, oh, it would probably on. be Top Close. 100. Top, okay. Respect. Right right outside of Respect. the 50 barrier. Yeah. Barriers and what have you. If that's it, though, are we done? Are we done? Are we done? Are we well, done? I, Go back out there I and just, take a nap if you want, right, dude. Good night. <laughs> I guess I'll just say I won't be here the next two weeks. Uh, Son of a bitch! Got, I'm in a wedding. You sure you want to be sleeping in the car? Yeah, I got a wedding next week I'm in, so I'll be out of town for that. And then the following week, I'll be out of town with military training. So. Getting yelled at by 500-year-old old men. Lieutenant Colonel. So you won't <laughs> see this beautiful face the next two weeks. I'm sorry. It's going to be sad. Hey, Rodney, you can come up to the big boy table, dude. You yeah, you can take my seat for... Two weeks, if you even show up. Yeah, if Ronnie's Dude, here. Who wants to eat that Cheeto I threw at the camera forever ago? Your daughter, probably. <laughs> All right, you can hit that stop button. You want to? Oh, see you. Okay. All right, see y'all next week, bruh.